Our next speaker, Dr. Peter Bolin, is going to talk with us on the first touch tone, leadership, and uh, the board's role in embracing the change and moving us to a sustainable organization. Peter has been a nationally renowned thought leader and speaker on healthcare in our industry for more than 30 years. He often helps leaders like us think about what's next. You know, a great, great question. And focuses on the skills required to get us successfully through what's next. We're really pleased to have Peter here with us this morning, and this is not his first time at a quorum conference. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Peter Bowen. But what I want to focus on is the consumer market. Where is the consumer market going in healthcare and why? And I want to relate this to sustainability, to your role as executives and your roles as trustees. And then I want to relate this to what I think is the real issue of our era, and that's affordability. And then to follow up on how does affordability affect your bottom line. Now we're going to go through a lot of facts and figures, and if, if I boil all the facts and figures down, it really begs one question, one question above everything else. And that is, over the next three years, particularly in the private market, can consumers afford to pay what you charge? And if one of your goals is patient engagement, the patient experience, I think it has to be, read this book. It's a book about a world-class medical center, the UCLA hospital system in West Los Angeles. What they did over a course of years was truly remarkable. It's an inspiring tale that the physician executive, frankly, was embarrassed that their patient satisfaction was somewhere in the low teens and topped in the mid-20s. That is not sustainable. And what he committed to was we're going to raise those scores and become a model patient engagement center. How did they do this? They went Nordstrom's. They convinced every person in the organization from top to bottom Put yourself in the patient's shoes. What do you have to deliver to have a truly unique and rewarding patient experience? Over a three or four year process, they were able to turn an entire bureaucracy into a patient engagement center. So my message is, if a sprawling apparatus can do this with tens of thousands of employees, certainly you can do the same in your community not only have we shifted care from the hospital as an inpatient focus to the physician's office and ambulatory settings, the focus of care going forward is now going to be in the palm of your hand. This isn't far-fetched. This is reality. And look at the medical functionality of the iPhone today. So if we're really concerned about engagement and access, what's the role of the hospital going to be? Are you going to become a bystander, or are you going to become the value-added information hub to add intelligence, insight, and wisdom to all the data coming into the patient? If you don't play this role, somebody else will. I put on my management consultant hat for just a minute, and if I was working with your board, I'd say, let's go to the whiteboard. Let's divide up into three segments. What's mission critical? What's need to have? And what's nice to have? In fact, forget the nice to have. We're never going to get there. We'll be lucky just to get mission critical. If I were to do all the things, what do you want to be? Number one is going to be cost reduction. Number two is probably going to be regional affiliation. And to get there, you're going to need transparency. You're going to need outcomes. And you're going to need engagement. If you can commit your resources, your prestige, and your time and effort. Here's my prescription for sustainability. Now, 
you know what my point of view is. You know where I'm coming from professionally. I want to know what you're thinking about, what you're prepared to do over the next two to three years. If you do a situational analysis of your community in relation to and in, in light of where healthcare finance is going and what the consumers are beginning to deal with now, I think it becomes really, really clear that you're going to have to set priorities, tough priorities. When we looked at those three or four examples of other institutions around the country that have made that journey through, have made that successful journey through sustainability, they had a vision. They had clear priorities. They were able to communicate those priorities throughout the whole organization. They had a relentless focus on accountability. Accountability at the board, accountability at the management level, and accountability to the community. Steward, stewardship, and stewardship of community. That's what they were committing to. That's the lasting legacy that they were willing and committed to bring to their communities. So the question I'd turn back to you is that, why not you? If these other small to medium-sized facilities can commit to change and successfully commit to sustainability, why not you? Well, and there's some readings that, like with the popular press, they've suggested that we have actually begun to bend the cost true. curve for the first time. Is that really true? Have we really bent the cost curve, and are we successful now at containing costs? The answer is absolutely no, and here's why. If you look at macro aggregate spending, yeah, there's been a blip, there's been a transitory pause. But I think it's a blip and a transitory cause for two or three reasons. One is that healthcare spending and healthcare costs follow roughly seven year cycles. And we're at the tail end of one of those cycles right now. Second, if you look at the actuarial assumptions going forward, that this is the first year now that insurance companies are now getting back the real utilization and cost data of activity on the exchanges. Now, if you look at how affordable health care deals were cut in order to pass the legislation, there were massive subsidies, subsidies to policyholders, subsidies to insurance companies. And the federal subsidy to insurance company basically said, we're going to underwrite your risk. We're going to put a cap on your risk for the first few years because nobody knows exactly how this is all going to work out. And true enough, they didn't. And the data now is coming back in to suggest, oh my god, there's a whole lot more risk than we thought even three and four years ago. And because they have now real data on real utilization and real costs, health care premiums are now going to begin the upward trajectory again. But even more important is that from a consumer point of view, there has been no blip. Per capita and unit costs continue to rise, health care premiums continue to rise, and deductibles continue to rise. From my point of view, from a consumer point of view, no, we have not bent the cost curve. In the future, will we actually get to a, a free enterprise answer to it? That with your stats, 96% of the people can't make their deductible. Will they eventually just not have insurance? Let me answer it in two ways. Are we really headed towards the wild rest and everybody's on their own and, and good luck? No, I don't, I don't think so. Go back to the employer business model again. If employers are not willing to go under because of health care costs, what's another way around it for them? Again, think beyond the managed care box, the managed care model for just a minute. If the employer can access the cash market, and the cash market can sit on top of whatever your PPO benefit design is as an optional service, and the employer can save twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on a particular procedure, well, boy, you're going to waive co-pays, deductibles, and everything else to make that possible. It's a net savings of thirty dollars or $40,000. What's in it for the consumer? Well, if I'm thinking about my $5,000, $10,000 deductible being waived, 
you can bet I'm willing to drive an extra hour. I'm willing to get on an airplane. It's a win-win for the employer. The cash market is a win-win for the consumer. I want to suggest to you, especially physicians, it's a potential win-win for you because you get paid in cash in full at the time of service. There's no paperwork, there's no bureaucracy, and you've solved your AR problem. It's no longer a perfect storm, it's an opportunity. And I want to suggest to you, as hospital leaders, as hospital trustees, the cash market has a parallel opportunity for you. It's a different set of constraints, but it's a different set of opportunities.